Hey folks, my name is Lily and today I want to show you how you can make some primitive fishing hooks. So let's say you are in a survival situation with nothing but maybe a knife and maybe a fire starter and you already made your shelter, your fire and you already have secured a water source and you were able to purify that water. So what comes next is food. And we humans can go quite a long time without food. So one time I hadn't eaten in six days and I was completely fine with it. But after a certain time, you want to put some calories back into your belly. So one thing that you can do if you have nothing else with you is you can make yourself some primitive fishing hooks. And today I'm sitting here beside this tree. This tree is called um, black locust tree. So it's looking a little bit similar like an acacia tree, but it's not, so it's a pseudo acacia tree. Uh, it's very similar, it has about the same hardness of wood and it comes with thorns. And some of those thorns can be really big, so I want to use them today to make a primitive fishing hook. Okay, today I'm rocking my uh, survival knife again. This is the Apocalypse One survival. It's my own design and right now it's available in Canada, USA and in Europe. So if you want to get this knife here, then you can check it out on my website or at the website of my dealers. You will find all of the links in the description below. Okay, some of these thorns are really big. Look at that. So these older ones, they come off pretty quickly from the bark. Let's see if the younger ones uh, a little bit more attached. Hmm, not really. So these older ones are actually quite brittle. Um, you will break them off too easily, so these are no good. But the younger ones seem to have a little bit like more life in them. So this branch is still alive and it seems as if the thorns are in much better condition and they don't break off so easily. Okay, the next thing that we need is some uh, materials for the fishing line. And here we have a dead willow shrub that has fallen over and you can pull off the bark and then what you will find is a cambium layer which has these very fine fibers. And this is one material that you can use to braid yourself a fishing line. It's probably not the best but it's also not the worst, so it can work. But if I have the choice, I would probably go for tree roots or lianas, or preferably I would go for sinews of animals and backstrap sinews or even rawhide. So this is probably my least favorite um, material for a fishing line. Hey, look at that. I just found a piece of bone and we can make some fishing hooks out of bone as well. So this is worth gold if you find this in the wilderness. Okay, next I want to find a hard stone. Um, this here is quartz and this is one of the hardest stones that you can find. It will be even harder than the bone that we found. So uh, this is coming with me and I want to work the bone on the stone. Here I have a second one. Let's see, maybe I can flint nap. Oh yeah. Okay, I just smashed one stone with the other and here you can see a nice quartz stone and now I have this sharp edge and this is what I need to sand down the bone. Okay, so today I also have brought some uh, sinew from an animal. I believe it was a lamb that we butchered at home. And now I'm going to soak it in water because then it will become more pliable. And this is probably the best um, natural material fishing line that you can have. And today I want to show you how you can braid this into a very fine fishing line. However, it needs to be said that um, the sinew is not really available in a survival situation, especially at the beginning. So uh, if you don't have the luck to find an animal where you can cut off the the sinew then you will have to go for other materials as well. Okay first I want to work on this bone here so I want to split it with my knife 
Oh gosh, I broke it. I've just split off a little bit of this bone, but of course it's much too thick. So I try to split it again, but first I'm going to scratch it so it splits where I want. And of course this is going to make your tip of the knife really dull. Okay, that's not too bad. Oh gosh. So this is the best that I could do and now I need to start with the sharpening process. Let's see if I can cut the bone. Uh, yeah, it works, but it's going to make your knife really dull, like really dull. So this technique where I just press onto the bone is working much better than doing it with more force. Yeah! Yeah, nice core! This is what I wanted, look at that. So now we have these two little toggles and these are almost perfect for a fishing hook. So it's not so easy to split the bone, but so far I came out with four small toggles. Nice. Yeah, that's good. I like it. Ouch. Oh my God, it's super sharp. This one is not too bad for a bigger fish. Okay, so I have split the bone and my intention was to make toggles like these. This one is almost perfect. But also the smaller ones are really good. And these small ones I would use to um, go for smaller fish. And then when you catch the smaller fish, you can use the intestines of the fish and put it on the bigger hooks. Okay, so now I want to use my quartz stone and start with the sanding process. And now I'm going to sand down all of the rough edges the bone marrow, which is at the inside. I want to make it as smooth as possible. And now I also want to sand um, both of the ends to make a nice um, like spike. Okay, this looks nice and if you take a look on this fishing hook, you can see that there's a small divot in the middle and that's what we want because we want the fishing line to stay on the toggle and you don't want the fishing line to come off to the sides. Okay, now I will take a couple of fibers of my uh, sinew. I try to separate them. Okay, now we want to put on the line onto the fishing hook and the best not for... Uh, attaching line to the middle of the toggle here is the constrictor knot and the constrictor knot basically starts out like a clove hitch so you make one loop then you make a second loop the second loop goes behind the first one you stick through your toggle and then we take this left line and go through the loop of the right line and this will secure um, the clove hitch a little bit better because the clove hitch is slipping quite a lot and this is why you want to constrict it. So here we have our fishing line and now we twist the line to make it stronger and we braid it like that. Now we add a little bit of more sinew to make the line longer. Okay, now I make the line a little bit thicker to make sure it doesn't break off. 
and from here on you can get thicker and thicker so the most important thing is that the first few inches are really thin so that the fish don't recognize the line but later on you can get thicker with your line and you can even attach this thing to a root of a tree or like any so the farther that you are away from the fishing hook the less the fish is going to realize that this is a fishing setup so now I'm at the end of the line and I just made this loop here So this is our first fishing hook that we made today. Uh, I believe that it's very likely that you will catch something with it. And now of course you need some bait. Um, let's say you find a grub or worm or grasshopper. Now what you want to do with the bait is, is that it needs to be as large or as long as the toggle is, maybe even a little bit longer. And then you want to take the string you want to hold it to the side and then you will come with your bait and put it over the toggle so that it's not visible anymore for the fish. So if they see the fishing hook they will also recognize it as a hook and then they will be more careful in getting the bait. So just make sure that you uh, shove over the bait entirely over the fishing hook and that it's not visible anymore. So then what will happen is um, Hopefully the fish will swallow the hook with the bait and then when it wants to swim away the hook will uh, do this so it will change directions and then it will get stuck in the throat of the fish and then hopefully you will have the fish on the line. Okay, so now our first fishing hook is done. It took me like 20 minutes to make it and the fishing line is really strong so you will not break this easily. Yeah, so this one is finished and I will put it into my primitive fishing kit. So here I have made another fishing hook that looks the same. And this is also some sinew. And here on top I have this small chamber, which is not too big. So this is basically my bait chamber and fishing hook chamber. So this is where the baited um, fish hook goes and then I can close the chamber with this um, bamboo lid and at the other side I have a bigger chamber and this is where I have a little bit of a primitive uh, survival kit going on so here I have some primitive needles and antler and this is some primitive hot glue. And I got more stuff in here. A small flint. This is a fishing spear out of bone. This is an awl and needle. And here I even got um, a bone fishing hook. Yeah, and then I got um, the ribs of a fish. And you can use those as well to make a good and solid fishing hook and here we have a fish hook that is longer at one end and this one is a fishing hook that you can use in an angled fashion okay for the next fishing hook I want to use this fish bone and also I've searched for a small twig that has a conjunction in it a knot so there was another branch here and now I want to split this small stick I hope it's not breaking and this small stick is still green so it's a little bit more flexible okay so now the split is working its way up so before I shove this in I first want to use some cordage and secure the split here okay now I can shove this in Okay, so I have attached the bone to that piece of wood um, and it's holding pretty good, so this is not going to come off easily. So I'm going to do one more wrap around this. 
and now this should hold really really good the only thing is that down here it's a little bit bulky so this might get in the way when you are putting on some bait Okay, the second fish hook is done and this one is pretty solid, so this won't break easily. It's also a little bit flexible, which is good, and I've made sure that uh, I used enough of cordage at the conjunction point so that these two parts uh, stay together. Now the thing is that the bottom part got really thick, so it will be a little bit tricky to get some bait on. So maybe for this kind of fish hook it would be better if you make a fly out of it. So if you find some feathers, you can interweave them into um, the string and then it looks like an insect. So maybe that's the better option for these kinds of fish hooks. So honestly I gotta say that I like the toggle fish hook much better because here it's really easy to put on some bait. Okay, now I want to make a fishing hook out of thorns. Okay, so I took um, two halves of thorns and I carved them so they will fit together like this so now we have a four pronged fishing hook but unfortunately the thorns come off really easily so you have to be extra careful with those thorns um, but even if one breaks there are still three others to go uh, to catch the fish so now we have to use some cordage and bind the two halves together to make a really good and sturdy fishing hook. Okay, I found a little bit of cordage. Um, this is tree roots from Willow and it's quite flexible. It's not perfect so it won't hold a really big fish but it will definitely be strong enough to catch smaller fish. Here we have another fish hook done. Uh, this one is pretty massive and big, so I would only use this one for very large fish. Also the question is, how do you put on the bait? So here I would put on a lot of worms. I would stick them on, then wrap them around, and then at the end I would stick them onto the thorns again. And I would probably use like three worms to completely wrap this hook um, because it's rather large and probably easily visible for any fish. Now one thing that I've noticed is that the thorns are now much more stable after I have put on the cordage and even if one of the thorns breaks there are still plenty enough um, to carry a heavy fish. So I think for bigger fish this is a great option. just found this toad in the sand and they are poisonous so you can't eat it but you can kill it and then you can use the intestines for fish bait and that's what I would wrap on onto my bigger fishing hook but in Austria all of the amphibians are protected so I'm going to let it sleep okay last but not least I would try something else so here I have a small root from a tree and now I take one of those thorns and I want to find out if I can push this through the root. Like that. Yeah, 
This is working, guys. Okay, here we got another style of fishing hook that directly connects to the root and this is some instant fishing line. Here also you will have the problem to put on the bait, so uh, wrapping with a worm is a good idea. And this is how you can use forns separately. Is this my favorite fish hook? Um, probably not. It's not bad. I think it will catch some fish, but in general it's really big. So you will have to put a lot of bait on it. Okay guys, so this is how you can make yourself some primitive fish hooks if you do not have any other fishing gear available or with you. Okay guys, so the small one is definitely my favorite and I want to try out all of these fishing hooks in a couple of months when the fishing season opens again. So probably in May I'm going to come out with another video uh, demonstrating if these are working or not. So I really want to thank you for watching and if you want to see more videos like this then make sure that you're subscribing to my channel and also check out my basic wilderness survival skills playlist on YouTube. Thank you for watching and stay tuned till next time.